Welcome to another Wimbledon video on history skills. Today we're going to look at the process of source analysis. This is the series of questions historians ask when they're looking at a source. With my students, I use an acronym to try and remember all the different types of questions you can ask. It's TMACPRU. This stands for type, origin, motive, audience, content, perspective, reliability and usefulness. Hopefully TMACPRU is relatively easy to remember because it's a bit weird. Regardless, it's a really good checklist to make sure you've asked all the different questions you can of a source. Let's start with type. This is just asking what type of source is it? Is it primary or secondary? Is it a diary account or a newspaper article or a photo or a, a memoir from somebody? It should be noted here to MacPro doesn't have to be the order in which you ask the questions. For example, type might affect audience and content later on. It's okay to talk about them out of order. There are general conclusions you can make based on the type of source. For example, a diary probably isn't going to have too much intentional bias because it's usually just written for you. Whereas memoirs, you're writing knowing that people are going to read what you've written. Origin. This is basically asking, where did the source come from? This is going to affect how we think about the source. For example, a general is going to have a very different idea of a battle than just a normal private. Motive. Or, why was the source written or created? One thing to look for here is intentional bias. For example, if a source is a letter to the editor on a contentious issue, well then there's a very good chance that the person is trying to persuade someone of something. This leads us to audience. Who did the author or creator of the source have in mind when they made it? The way you write about an event will change based on if you're writing to your wife, or maybe writing a letter to the paper, or writing your memoirs, which you know are going to go down in history. Audience is often overlooked, but should play a big role in your analysis of a source. Content. This is asking not just what's in the source, but how is that information presented? For example, is there emotive language? Does the person use strong adjectives? Are there perhaps prejudicial terms or slurs or names used? Is the tone of the language formal, like an official account, or colloquial, like it's an offhand comment? This is also important when looking at visual sources. Are caricatures used? How is the information placed? Is something more prominent? Is a stereotype used? It's thinking through things like this, which is going to make your analysis seem much more sophisticated rather than simplistic. For example, a simplistic analysis might say, it says this, rather than, and this is formal in tone and it's quite prominent, which shows the author thought it was important. Perspective. What do we know about the creator of the source? Where were they coming from? Here we're mainly looking for unintentional bias. For example, what were the cultural or gender or racial or national ideas that would have affected the person creating the source? This is looking at the perspective of the source from a societal point of view. But you can also look at individual perspective. For example, let's say a general loses a battle and sends a report back to his superiors. There's obviously going to be some intentional bias here. He might downplay his mistakes and exaggerate the strength of the enemy. But by looking at perspective, we might see that he was heavily influenced by imperialism. So his unintentional bias was assuming his troops were superior simply because they were fighting against colonials. Reliability. As we've already discussed bias in perspective, this is money looking at how can we trust that this source is what it says it is. In other words, how authentic is it? Did you find it in a museum which stakes its reputation on things that are historically accurate? What about your internet sites? Is it from an educational or a government website? Or is it some Weebly address, you know, um, Mrs. Smith's Year 7 class.com.au? Finally, you're going to have to take all of that into account and come up with a conclusion. Just how reliable is this source? Once you've done that, Let's look at usefulness. Often the conclusion students come up with doesn't actually answer the question, which is how useful is it for a specific historical investigation. They'll often leave the specific investigation completely out of the conclusion. So rather than thinking about the investigation, they'll simply at the end say, yes, it's useful for that investigation, or no, it's not useful for that investigation. A better, more sophisticated conclusion would be specifically What's it useful for? For example, yes, it's useful for the investigation. 
just doesn't sound as nuanced as, yes, it could be used to show the attitudes of soldiers at the end of the conflict. Another conclusion students often make is, the source is reliable, therefore it's automatically useful, or vice versa. That's actually not correct. For example, a source might be really reliable, but not actually that useful for a specific historical investigation. This might just be because the investigation is looking at things from a different perspective. Or maybe the source is just too broad or too narrow in scope. Or, because of bias, a source might only be slightly reliable, but is actually incredibly useful. For example, a letter to the Edda. It might be colloquial, it might have emotive language, it might be really biased. But if you're looking at different societal attitudes, then it's perfect. Remember, the teacher is looking at the subjective and messy process of analysis. We're not looking for perfection. We're looking for you as good historians to always be asking questions and using specific examples from the source. So hopefully, to MacPro is a helpful checklist you can use when seeking to analyse sources. This has been the Wimbledon Channel. Any questions, comment below and don't forget to like and subscribe.